Hi everyone. I'm Joseph Polizzotto. I'm the alternative media specialist at UC Berkeley, and I'm going to be sharing my screen now, and I'm going to be talking about how we turn docx files or Microsoft Word files into HTML. Okay, everyone. Um, so this presentation is entitled Turning Math into HTML, and in this presentation, you will learn about our workflow for creating accessible math. These steps can be used to create standalone HTML files or HTML content for an LMS. So why do we create HTML files that have mathematical content in them? So STEM students who are blind need to be able to do two things with the math that they encounter. Number one, hear the math read out loud accurately, and two, be able to navigate within the mathematical object. Students with limited vision also may want to enlarge the math. So you can see in the screenshot, we have an example of a math equation that is in an HTML document and a portion of the math equation is being highlighted in purple using MathJax accessibility extension. And you can see on the screen the caption for that element of the math equation. And this is what the screen reader user would be able to hear. And the student navigating this equation would be able to navigate within this portion of the equation and be able to move inside and out of it and move to other parts. We think HTML is the best format to enable students to, to do those two things I mentioned, to hear the math read out loud accurately and navigate within the mathematical object. Not only can math in HTML be rendered as MathML, which is the most accessible type of math code, but HTML is also a, a very flexible format for making other aspects of your document more accessible, such as tables, complex images, and foreign language content. Screen reader users interact with web content all the time, and so it's likely that the HTML versions of your STEM content will also be much more predictable for students to navigate and interact with. Like I mentioned, uh, I'm the alternative media specialist at UC Berkeley and I work in the disability office and we convert over a thousand files for each semester for, for students in our program. And the majority of the students for whom we're creating alternative formats are blind and who use a screen reader. Uh, we currently have nine blind students whom we're serving and all of them receive HTML as their preferred format. While a few of our students who are blind also read Nemeth Braille code, which is the math Braille code, we are not currently producing hard copy Braille for these students, except when there are complex graphics. And in that case, we'll create a tactile graphic with Nemeth Braille code labels for the graphic. But except for that scenario, the bulk of the blind students' course content that we're producing is in HTML, which the students access with their screen reader. We have students using VoiceOver, NVDA and JAWS. And so all the math that we're converting in those documents typically is is being rendered in in the HTML format as MathML. I want to start to talk about our workflow now. Our workflow for creating accessible STEM content in HTML is as follows. First off, we want to get the math expressions into a Microsoft Word document because Microsoft Word is the authoring environment that we use for many of our formats, including HTML. We, we do all of our authoring in Word and we add alternative text for images, we create accessible tables, um, add extended descriptions for complex graphics, all in Microsoft Word. We, we want to get the math equations into Microsoft Word um, and we're going to be getting the math equations into the Office Math format, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, that's my, Microsoft Word's native equation format. Second, once we've formatted the Microsoft Word document with math equations, then we convert our Microsoft Word document to HTML using a, a bash script that I'll be showing you uh, later that I developed. Uh, finally, after the HTML conversion is complete, we check the HTML in the browser to make sure everything is displayed properly and it reads out loud correctly with a screen reader or assistive technology. And then if necessary, um, we might edit HTML in a text editor, but typically we don't need to do that because our script does all the heavy lifting for making sure all the code is accessible. So let's talk a little bit about each of these steps in more detail. 
So step one, adding math expressions to Microsoft Word, is a step that can vary depending upon the source file we receive. So in most cases, the math documents we're converting are PDF files that professors have uploaded into the LMS. In our case, we use Canvas. And these are not documents that professors have authored themselves, so we cannot obtain the original source files like in Microsoft Word or LaTeX. So in this case, our process is to use a combination of math OCR tools plus math type to create the accessible equations in Word. We do sometimes have faculty that author documents in LaTeX, and then we do not need to use math OCR tools because in that case, we can use a program, which I'll show later, like LaTeX to Word that can convert the LaTeX document to a Microsoft Word document with that Office Math. So let me just uh, show you a little bit about what this looks like. So on the screen, I'm showing a screenshot on the left-hand side of an image-based PDF that has mathematical content in it. This might be a document that we pulled down from the LMS. And if we're converting this PDF document to Word, what we have to do is use a Math OCR program. And one of those is a program called MathPix. In the middle of the screen, we'll see the MathPix interface. And MathPix is just kind of like Snagit or one of those other screen grabbing type software programs where you just click a button, draw a box around the equation, and then it will snip the math and produce it in a variety of accessible formats, including LaTeX. You can then just copy the recognized LaTeX version of that equation that you snipped and then paste it into Word. So on the right-hand side, you see all the equations that, that have been converted to an accessible format in Word, and they're being highlighted. In some cases, like actually with this document that we have in front of us, there's so many equations and there's lots of inline math that we actually also use would use uh, Infty Reader which is a, uh, another kind of math OCR program that can recognize equations in the entire document. So we use that a lot. In fact, in this example, with this document on the screen, we, we did use InfD Reader. And then we use a program called the CAT Toolbar, where from Central Washington University to just clean up the output of the InfD Reader OCR program, to remove like spaces in the middle of the equation and highlight the equations so that we can see them all at a glance. Now, in some cases, we don't even use the math OCR. If there's so few equations in there and we just see one in the middle of a paragraph where we will use math type and just quickly author it on our own. We don't necessarily have to even use a math OCR program. But Infty Reader and MathPix are the programs we would use for OCR. Um, next, we, we have another program that we will use in the event that we don't need to use OCR and we have a LaTeX source file. Some of our professors author in LaTeX, and LaTeX is that, that writing system that STEM professionals will use for, for formatting all their documents uh, in preparation for, for publishing, like to journals and, and for, for their books, their eBooks. So if we have a source LaTeX file, then we don't use Math OCR. We use a program called GrindEQ LaTeX to Word, and that program can convert the LaTeX file into an Office or DocX format, and it will convert the LaTeX equation in the file to Office Math equation. So on the left, we see a LaTeX file, and then in the middle, we have the GrindEQ LaTeX to Word interface. And after the conversion, we see on the right, we see a DocX with Office Math equations. So it's a simple, uh, quick two-step process. The other program I, I mentioned that we use sometimes for just authoring individual equations or for cleaning up the results of the OCR process is math type. We will go into the equation and edit uh, the equation if there are any like spurious characters or extra spaces that can interfere with the correct reading of the math. So for instance, in this screenshot, we see the math type interface where we have a portion of the equation highlighted, which is just a spurious space, and we'll go in and, and delete that space to make sure that the equation is, is accurate. We also will have to sometimes update the equation to make sure that any text part of the equation is in the text style, not math style. And math type is a very powerful program that has lots of shortcuts for quickly adding all the kinds of symbols that you'll need to add. Um, to a math equation. And it, it's much more robust and easier to use than, say, 
just the native Microsoft Word equation editor that you have in, in Microsoft Word. Now, once we're, we're, we're done with formatting the equations using math type, we've gotten all the equations into Word. Before we complete this first step in our process, we have to make sure that all of the equations are in the Office Math format. Um, Office Math, uh, again, is the native Microsoft Word equation format. And that's the format of equations that our script will be able to recognize to then convert to HTML. If you have a document that has math type equations in it, the step that you'll need to follow then is to use another tool by GrindyQ called math type to equation, which can just do a batch processing of your all the equations in your Word document that are math type equations and convert them into office math equations. So in this screenshot we have um, on the ribbon the GrindyQ math tool and it shows math type to equation button and we just click a button there convert document and it will convert all the equations to office math equations and another thing to to know about the difference between math type equations and office math equations is that math type equations typically will uh, will, will have a dotted box around them and whereas office math equations don't have a, a border around them they have this little down arrow next to the right of them so that's how you know which equation is which so now I want to move into the second step of our workflow. Uh, once we have Word documents that have Office math equations in them, we're then ready to use our Bash script called docx HTML. And this is really the heart of our workflow. We developed a script, a Bash script, um, to use for this purpose because we really identified a gap in the field of alternative media production where when you have a Microsoft Word document and you want to convert to HTML, there's not a real easy way to do that. Microsoft Word has its own save as HTML option, but there's uh, a lot that is left to be desired with the output in HTML. There's a lot of inaccessible code, uh, headings even aren't, aren't transferred to HTML. The math is, is not accessible. What we did is using a number of open source tools and particularly a command line tool called Pandoc, we built on top of that and, and created a way for, for being able to output Word documents as HTML with a much cleaner HTML code and with, in this case, uh, what we're talking about today, much more accessible math output options as well. I'm going to talk a little bit about that now. So I'm going to share just the basic usage of our script now. So the docx HTML script that uh, we're talking about is available on GitHub. And so if you just go to the link that's in the presentation, you can see there there's all the information that you need to know about the script, about how to download it and install it. If you have any questions about it, feel free to reach out to me. Um, Philip can give you our information um, as well if you want to reach out. Basically, the way it works, you need to use the command line. Uh, so if you're not familiar with using a command line interface or a terminal, you will need to get accustomed to that. So you're just using commands like uh, text commands in the command line interface to say which document you want to convert or which directory or folder you want to convert the documents from and then what the output options are that you want to use. And I'll give a demonstration of this in a bit. We have a, the version of the script available on the PC and on the Mac. If you're using a PC, since a PC doesn't have all the programming tools that often are used for doing like find and replace functions and such, uh, we do require that you have to use the script. You have to use the Git Bash, Git for Windows program. So I have on the, the GitHub site instructions about how to download Git for Windows and configure it. Um, once you install Git for Windows, you'll be able to have all the, the utilities you'll need to run the script properly. Mac OS, it's not required since Mac OS has built in out of the box are, are already all those tools. So what you'll do is when you install, have all the installation set up right, you'll just simply go to a folder where there's a folder with uh, Microsoft Word document in it. So here we have a folder where we have a Microsoft Word document called Key Equations. And uh, this is the same document I was mentioning before we used with Infd to uh, OCR the images. 
so here we can see it. Okay, so this is a document with Microsoft Word equations. So you could put a number of Word documents in here. The script will do uh, batch processing. You just go here, I'm on a PC, and you select Git Bash here. And the terminal will open up from that current directory, which is called Math Example. And then uh, to run the script, you just simply type in the name of the script, which is docxhtml.sh, and you press Enter. And the script will look for any Word documents that are in that directory and will convert them to a folder uh, with the same name as the docx. And, we'll, and there will be an HTML file in there. And there will also be a media folder if there are images there. And uh, the basic, when you use the script without any options in it, the default uh, option for converting math equations is to render the math equations using MathJax. Uh, if you don't know what MathJax is, MathJax is a JavaScript library that will ensure that any uh, MathML or LaTeX or WebTech versions of math in your web page are going to be displayed as MathML across all browsers, regardless of that browser's support for for MathML. So, so the default method, since we don't always know which browsers our students are using or what they prefer, and since we want students to have MathML, the most accessible versions of math available, we we just use the default option of um, for running our script, which is MathJax. So um, this file has now been uh, converted. We see that there were no warnings or errors. Um, there's an attention to look at the math equations that have a green, its default background is green, which uh, is how our CSS file is written. We have a CSS, the default style sheet that we use in our conversion that helps us with just looking for certain aspects of our HTML file. So let's go to that that file now. Um, so here's that file that we just converted. Uh, it's being rendered as MathJax. So you can see if I right click, it's got the MathJax uh, menu there. So I can just scroll down and see that all the math is correct. Uh, it's displayed properly. If I did indeed find that one of the math equations was not rendered properly or something was off here at this step, I could go back to Microsoft Word and correct that, okay? So that's the basic usage of, of our, our script. Now I wanna talk a little bit more, um, let, let's just, uh, let me give you an example of other kinds of uh, documents that we convert with um, HTML just to give you a sense for like why we use HTML. So here's, an, uh, a file that we convert in HTML that, that kind of shows you the full force of like all of the, the robust flexibility you have when you create the HTML files. So we have our page numbers marked up. We actually use heading six for easier navigation. We add transcribers notes. Our script will also process the, the tables if they have um, complex like row headers or, or column headers, those are all formatted correctly so students can quickly, um, can, can hear which, which cell they're in of the table. Our, ta uh, our HTML has support for extended descriptions. So this just shows you why we use HTML since it has so much accessibility um, features in it that our students need when they're navigating complex kind of formats. Um, Another kind of document that we have um, that can show you this is, uh, let's see here. Um, so it has a table of contents and also there's like uh, footnote regions. So those are add added by our script. We have hyperlinks for footnotes. Those are automatically added. So students can quickly jump to those. We have block quotes. These are the kinds of features in general that, that students need um, in their documents. We also have, um, second language content is marked as correctly. So going back now to our, um, so that's why we create HTML files in general, uh, because of how much flexibility the, that format provides us. Those are a few examples of our HTML documents. Let's go back to our discussion about math. One of the options that we have also when running the script is the hyphen J option. If you use that, 
what will happen is you'll produce the HTML file where you do not have the portion of the HTML code that is the head code or the footer and the footer code. So you just have the, the navigation region and the main region of the HTML code outputted. And what makes that, what, what's nice about that is you could just simply copy and paste the code from that type of document and into Canvas or your LMS so that um, you could author your web pages using Word output to HTML with this J option and then paste that into your LMS so you don't have to do all your authoring in like the rich text editor of Blackboard or Canvas. And what's nice about it is you can make sure that you're getting the kind of outputted MathML and other maybe math uh, output options you'd want there. You also get a table of contents. So what we see on the screen now is a screenshot of Canvas, one of our Canvas courses, a Canvas page where we've got a table of contents and accessible math equations that were outputted by our script. I want to talk a little bit about the parameters that you can use as well when using the M option with our script. So when you when you run the script, you can type hyphen M for math and you can choose one of these output options for the math. So we said that by default it outputs MathJax, uh, it uses MathJax as the default output option, but you could use hyphen M and then MathML to output the Word document as HTML plus MathML. So if the student is going to be using Safari or Firefox, if that's their preferred browser, and they don't want to have to be um, working online where they have to access the MathJax CDN, you could just output directly as MathML and then the MathML is in the math, in the HTML document and those two browsers, Safari and Firefox, support MathML natively. So the student wouldn't necessarily need to be working online. WebTech is another option where you can output the math as images of math and the images will have LaTeX as alt text. And that's a nice option if you have students who are blind who use braille displays and who say are very well versed in LaTeX and they would prefer not to have the math read out loud but would just prefer to, to navigate the equation on their braille display using their using LaTeX. Um, in Germany at some universities that's the the method that most of the blind students there prefer and that's a nice so that's a nice option for some of your students. MathSpeak is another output option and that's where you can also output the math as images of math with a more descriptive alt text. And this can be really nice for say students who are using Kurzweil because um, Kurzweil uh, when it's when you use the read the web tool, Kurzweil is that program for mainly students who have dyslexia or some learning difficulty. Kurzweil has in its read the web tool online an option for reading alternative text for images. So if you output the HTML as with the math speak option, then the alt text will have descriptive math and you can, the students can navigate or hear, hear that text read out loud in line with the, with the rest of the text. Whereas with, otherwise it would just skip over the math and it would be, it sound sort of clunky. Um, SVG is short for scalable vector graphics and that's a nice format to output to if you have students who want to enlarge the the math to higher levels of magnification and uh, not lose the quality of the image. Um, also, SVG is a really nice output option if students also wanted to use text-to-speech. Maybe they don't use Kurzweil because in Microsoft Edge, there's a read aloud utility. If you turn that on, it uses Microsoft Core Voices, really high quality voices, and Microsoft those Microsoft Voices in Microsoft Edge will read out loud the title element of the SVG images and so you could have a student reading math equations in Microsoft Edge without having to install any programs at all. And I can give you an example of that. So this here, here we have uh, Microsoft Edge where we've outputted as SVG and these have descriptive alt text. So if I just hover over, let's see, if I hover over, you can see the, the alternative text there underneath that. And if I click read aloud, um, you can um, hear the equations read out loud. I want to give you another demo and I want to talk now about a new feature we just added called the I option. I is for inspect. What this option does is when you're running the script, if you type in I at runtime, as you can see here, I typed in I and then M SVG. 
you will uh, get in Microsoft Edge a list of all of the equations that it recognized and they'll be displayed in Microsoft Edge. So let me just do that now. You will be able to see what the alternative text is and you'll be able to correct the alternative text to make it more accessible for your given student. So what the script is doing in the background is when you run the script is it it's it's using the speech rules engine that one of the developers for MathJax put together, which determines how the math is read out loud when you use MathJax. Our script is basically using that speech rules engine to output the alternative text into the HTML file. And then you could add corrections to that if you wish. So if students didn't want to hear things like start root or end root or um, superscript or baseline or those types of things, which is what the MathJax speech rules engine uh, will do by default, you can do find and replace macros while you're running the script on those types of elements so that the equations are going to be more uh, natural sounding for your students. So what you see here is the script is processing each equation. There are about 21 equations there. When it's done, it opens up Microsoft Edge if you're using the PC version or Safari if you're using the Mac version. And what you can do here is you can just quickly see what the alternative text for the math will be. So for instance, you'll see here on equation nine of this document, it's reading out loud the dot. It's, it's going to read it as dot instead of multiplied by. So you could say, yes, I want to correct this equation and uh, it's equation number nine. And what you'll do is you can just type in, this is a text area in the HTML. You could just type in what it should be and you just copy, you can then copy that and then put it in the terminal. Um, and then it will replace that alternative text with the correct one. Um, another option that's nice is uh, once you, you could do that for individual equations, you could just quit that loop and you could go to, uh, if you see that there's multiple instances of words that you don't want to have read out loud as alternative text, you could say yes for I want to replace certain words and you could say um, start root should be, um, uh, the square root of. So now start root is going to be changed to the square root of. So that's what students are going to hear. And end root is going to be replaced with nothing. So once I'm done with that, I'll do quit. And then um, the script will proceed with converting it to HTML. And then I can test the equations to um, go back and test the equations to make sure that they're they're read out loud properly. Uh, so that's a nice feature if you want to customize how the alternate text should be pronounced for students. That's also nice, especially when you when you have students who are who are sighted, who are who are not used to hearing math read out loud and they want to have a more natural sounding math, you could you definitely want to use those options. So I realize I'm out of time. Just quickly uh, I shared this slideshow with Philip, could share this with everyone. There's a, just a couple more steps after this that you might need to follow that you might want to use to just check to, to make sure that your output at HTML is correct, such as checking the HTML in the browser, um, checking with assistive technology. And we've included resources here about where to get our docx HTML script and all those OCR tools and math authoring tools that we mentioned as well. So um, if you have any questions about our workflow, feel free to let me know.